Hey everybody, welcome to Leo's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Got a funny one here. This is Nathan's Home Light 330. And this thing, I mean, if it wasn't for the missing sticker and a little bit of exhaust and oil residue here, you could clean it up and this thing would look nice. So I don't know the history on the saw in terms of how Nathan came by it. Uh, he took it to a shop in Ohio. They diagnosed it with low compression and found the intake boot has been leaking slash completely deteriorated. That part I don't, uh, don't, you know, that, yeah, intake boots, that's pretty standard on these things. But the low compression and what they told him verbally about possibly needing uh, bearings and, you know, all of that, I'm kind of like... I think the shop didn't want to work on it. So we're going to do our own compression test here. Okay. That looks more like 135 PSI than 100 PSI to me. Just saying. So I didn't do anything to the cylinder. I didn't squirt anything in there. If I had, we'd have been reading 150. So that makes me feel good for Nathan and bad for Nathan all at the same time. Because this shop that I think just didn't want to work on the saw gave him the good news for $37.54. Now, honestly, <laughs> I expected it to be a whole lot more than that, but he had sent me the pictures and I'm like, you so seldom see a scored piston on one of these things that, you know, with how good this looks, I, I just didn't buy it. I, and I, I still don't buy it. So, what are we going to do? We're going to tear this thing down, we're going to put a damn intake boot in it, and we're going to run it, and it's going to run, and it's going to run good. So, I think I have enough videos out on the web that show intake boot replacement on these things that I'm not going to go ahead and do a full video this time, but what I'm going to do is get this repaired. have got a little company over here, so I may have to stop in between. But I'm going to get this taken care of, and we'll come back for a test run. So that foam is that old ridiculous gasket around here. Part of what supports my theory that this has no hours on it. That filter looks almost new, but the rubber's just stiff enough. I think that's the original air filter. And it just... Do I want a sandwich? Yes, please. He said yes, please. With everything. With everything? Yep, all the meats. Yes, and all the <laughs> uh, I've got to go back to the box and dig through it, though. Carburetor's missing. There's no carburetor on this saw. So I really, really hope it's in that little cardboard box I saw in there that I thought was being used for a spacer. So anyway, I'm going to get my stuff together and start working on this. But I just wanted to, out of the box, show you guys. Don't, if you've got a saw that that you think is good and just a, a shop tells you, nah, it's garbage, do a little investigation yourself or double check their work uh, I don't can't tell you how common it is for one of those compression gauges to read inaccurately that one I spent a little bit of money on so I'm comfortable that it's it's reasonably enough accurate there's not a 35 pound variance you know in they said a hundred pounds I don't I think their gauge was bad it's either that or they've just put that number on the paper because they did not want to work on it and as far as I'm concerned, if you don't want to work on it, just tell the customer, hey, we can't get parts, or we don't want to get parts, we don't want to work on it, we don't want to be liable for the work. Just be honest about it. I don't know. 
had is rolling smooth. Obviously, I don't have a spark plug in there, but I can actually feel the pulse coming back up through what's left of the intake here. There's no noise from those bearings. Intake boot, and maybe a carb rebuild. This bad boy is going to be running. Okay, intake boot replaced. That was literally the only thing wrong in this saw. Even the duckbill valves still look like brand new. See if uh, see if she wants to go. Definitely want to give it a little more time here. I'd like to see a little more oil output. But it's starting to pump over there. I can see that. Let's see if I can get it unflooded. like dumb but funny I think I forgot to hook the kill switch wire up other than that this thing is good to go that'll be an easy enough one for me to tear back into didn't take any time at all but again for a saw that was 
ready for the trash heap sounds pretty good doesn't it so this will get the standard treatment it'll sit for a couple days and I'll do a cold start just to make sure everything's good to go but I would say this one is not far from cutting wood again okay let's do a test run this uh, ignition switch ought to be fixed now there was a faulty ground lead uh, believe it or not the, the uh, anti-vibe system on these there's a separate lead runs from an engine mounting screw back here all the way up to provide ground to that switch and the factory crimp on the connector way up here had apparently pierced the wire and broken it I don't know how long it actually worked but with the few hours this saw has on it I'm gonna say not very damn many This saw is finally ready to go.